I think people might not fully get how good the Spurs could be this season. First off, we gotta start with the two new additions. Of course, Chris Paul. Chris Paul joining the Spurs is an exciting move, and I can't wait to see what he'll do alongside Wemby. Even though Paul's heading into his 20th season at 39 years old, he's still a game changer. The guy is a basketball genius, and his presence on the court is exactly what the Spurs need to maximize Wemby's potential. One of the biggest things Chris Paul will bring to the table is his ability to ease the workload on Wemby. Wemby had a fantastic rookie season, but having a veteran like Paul will take so much pressure off him. Paul can orchestrate the offense in a way that lets Wemby focus on what he does best, dominate in the paint, and stretch the floor. Paul still got the passing chops to set up alley-oops and create easy buckets. I mean, picture Wemby catching lobs from one of the best passers to ever play the game. That combination alone should boost Wemby's scoring. Paul knows how to find the open man, and he'll be able to get Wemby the ball in spots where he can thrive. Now, Paul might not be the scorer he once was, but that's not what the Spurs need from him. He averaged a career low 9.2 points last season with the Warriors, but even in a reduced role, his playmaking was still top notch with 6.8 assists per game. On a team like San Antonio, where Wemby is the focal point, Paul's assist numbers are going to go up. He might not be putting up double doubles every night, but I wouldn't be surprised if he flirts with it regularly. Just having a guy with Paul's vision and experience running the offense is a massive upgrade. The Spurs got a steal with Paul's contract too. He's only taking up 7.4% of the team's salary cap, which is a bargain for someone of his caliber. San Antonio knows they're getting a floor general who can guide their young star, and that's invaluable for Wemby's development. Paul's leadership is going to be huge. Wemby's got all the tools, but having a vet like CP3 show him the ropes is going to take his game to another level. Even though Paul isn't the same scorer he was in his prime, his basketball IQ is still off the charts. He's seen it all, and that experience is going to help the Spurs in more ways than just on the stat sheet. His ability to control the pace of the game, make smart decisions, and lead by example is going to rub off on the whole team. So yeah, I'm pumped to see how this plays out. Chris Paul may be 39, but he's still got a lot to offer. And with Wemby as his running mate, the Spurs could surprise a lot of people this season. And then besides CP3, the Spurs also added Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes joining the Spurs is a big deal. This guy's been a model of consistency throughout his career. And at 32, he still brings a lot to the table. The Spurs didn't even have to give up anything to get him. That's a huge win, especially when you consider how much value Barnes can add to this team. He's a veteran who's won a championship, and that's going to be crucial for a young squad like San Antonio. One of the biggest advantages Barnes brings is his ability to space the floor. He shot a solid 38.5% from three over the last five seasons. That's exactly what the Spurs need. With Wemby commanding so much attention inside, Barnes can sit behind the arc and knock down threes. This is going to open up the floor for Wemby to go to work, and it'll make life so much easier for everyone on the team. Plus, Barnes is a reliable catch-and-shoot threat, which is huge for a team developing young playmakers like Stefan Castle. Barnes may not be putting up 19 points per game like he did in his prime, but that's not what the Spurs are asking for. He averaged around 12 points last season, and that's right about where he'll be in San Antonio, with guys like Chris Paul and Wimby getting their shots. Barnes won't need to be the primary scorer, but trust me, he'll be the perfect third option in this offense. His ability to hit open shots and provide secondary scoring will be a game changer. And don't forget, Barnes is a solid defender. While he may not be the focal point on defense, with guys like Wemby and Sohan taking the lead, Barnes will still hold his own. He's got the experience and versatility to guard multiple positions, which will make him a valuable asset on that end of the floor. What's really exciting about Barnes, though, is how well he fits into the Spurs system. That's going to help him adapt quickly to the Spurs style of play, which is all about efficiency and deliberate ball movement. Barnes is the kind of guy who can thrive in that environment from day one. Another thing I love about Barnes is his professionalism and locker room presence. He's known as one of the nicest guys in the league, and that's gonna help him connect with his teammates and the fan base. I think Barnes will be a fan favorite in no time. He's a team first player, and that's exactly the kind of personality the Spurs need as they look to build around their young core. Barnes might not be the flashiest player on the roster, but his consistency, experience, and ability to fill multiple roles will make him a key part of the Spurs' success. I'm excited to see how he helps elevate this team, especially with Wemby leading the way. And then besides the two they added, we gotta look at the guys already on the squad. 
And how can we not start with Wemby? Wemby's rookie season was nothing short of extraordinary. The hype surrounding this guy was unreal, and somehow, he managed to exceed all of it. His stats alone are enough to turn heads. He averaged 21.4 points, 10.6 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and 3.6 blocks per game. And to top it off, he shot an impressive 46.5% from the field. At just 20 years old, he stepped into the NBA like he'd been there for years. One of the craziest things about Wemby's first season, he didn't just come in and play well, he came in and rewrote the record books. Winning Rookie of the Year unanimously is no easy feat, and he's only the seventh player ever to do it. But he didn't stop there. Wemby made the all-defensive first team as a rookie. That's right, the first rookie ever to accomplish that. And he finished second in Defensive Player of the Year voting. The guy's defense is already elite, and he's just getting started. Think about this for a second. He became the youngest player ever to record a 5 out 5 game. That's when you get five or more points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. That's something even the greatest players in the game struggle to do, and Wemby did it in his first season. Not to mention, he's only the 10th player in NBA history to average 20 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks in a season. Talk about making a statement. Wemby even joined an exclusive club with his 1,500 points, 250 assists, and 250 blocks in a single season. He's only the fourth player ever to do that. The only other names on that list? They're legends of the game. To already be in those kinds of conversations after just one season is wild. Now, I've gotta say, watching Wemby last year made me feel like I was witnessing something historic. It's hard to compare him to any other rookie in Spurs history, except maybe Tim Duncan and David Robinson. But in terms of the impact he had right away, Wemby is already in that conversation. He's living up to the hype, no question about it. And off the court, he's winning over the fan base just as much. No drama, no controversy, just a humble, hardworking guy who occasionally drops a nerdy sci-fi quote. What's not to love? What's even more terrifying for the rest of the league is how much better Wemby got as the season went on. When the Spurs moved him to center full-time, it was like unlocking a new level to his game. He was able to play more in the pick and roll, and his offensive versatility really started to shine. I'm talking about a seven-footer who can handle the ball, pass like a guard, and knock down shots from anywhere on the floor. Whether it's spacing the floor, taking defenders off the dribble, or posting up, Wemby can do it all. And let's not forget about his defense. I mean, he's already one of the best rim protectors in the league. He can switch onto guards, protect the paint, and shut down entire offenses with his length. The guy's wingspan is out of this world, and he uses it to block or alter shots that most players wouldn't even think about contesting. The ceiling for him defensively is sky high. Looking ahead, Wemby's only going to get better. He's already putting in work this offseason, reportedly doing two-a-day workouts in San Antonio. That kind of dedication is exactly what you want to hear about a young star. The guy's hungry to improve, and that's dangerous for the rest of the NBA. Now sure, Wemby has some things to work on. He was on a minutes restriction for most of the season, and there were times when he looked a little tired in the fourth quarter. But that's not a huge concern, as he gets stronger and more conditioned, he'll be able to handle the heavy minutes the Spurs will need him to play. He may not bulk up like some of the league's more muscular big men, but adding a bit of strength will definitely help him stay dominant down low. Another area where Wemby can improve is his ball handling. He averaged 3.7 turnovers per game last season, which isn't terrible for a rookie, but it's definitely something he can tighten up. If he cuts down on those sloppy passes and improves his handle, his game will reach another level. Plus, he shot just 32.5% from three last season. Now, don't get me wrong, he's got touch from deep, and he actually led the league in step back three-point shooting at 46.2%. So we know he's capable, it's just a matter of refining his catch and shoot stroke. Here's the crazy part, Wemby's rookie season might be the worst one he ever has in the NBA. Let that sink in for a minute. If this was his floor, his ceiling is going to be unreal. As he continues to develop, and as the Spurs build a more competitive team around him, we could be talking about a future MVP, maybe even a multiple-time MVP. The potential is that high. Next season, the expectations are going to be higher, for sure. Spurs fans are going to want to see this team win more games. Another 20-win season just isn't going to cut it. But with Wemby leading the charge, I'm confident they'll be in the mix for a playoff spot sooner rather than later. If there's one young player in the league who can turn a team's fortunes around, it's Wemby. He's already proven he can dominate. Now it's just about taking that next step, and I have no doubt that he will. The guy's work ethic, 
talent, and basketball IQ are off the charts. Watching him grow is going to be something special. Another guy who was a standout last year, Devin Vassell. Vassell showed the NBA just how good he can be in the 2024 season. After dealing with injuries the previous year, he came back with something to prove, and he did just that. Vassell played in 68 games, averaging an impressive 19.5 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 4.1 assists per game. He's a natural scorer, but what really stood out is how much his game matured, especially on the defensive end. One thing that jumped out to me was how well he bounced back from his knee surgery. Vassell missed a few games early in the season, but once he found his rhythm, it was like watching a completely different player. He wasn't just scoring in bunches, he became a three-level scorer. Whether it was driving to the hoop, pulling up from mid-range, or knocking down threes, Vassell did it all. He shot 37.2% from beyond the arc, and in his final 33 games, he was averaging 21.3 points, shooting nearly 40% from three on over six attempts per game. That's the kind of production that makes defenders nervous. What really impressed me was how Vassell didn't just rely on his scoring, he evolved as a playmaker too. His 4.1 assists per game showed that he's more than capable of creating for his teammates, making him an even more valuable piece for the Spurs. And with Wemby taking up so much attention on the court, Vassell's ability to create his own shot became crucial. In fact, when the offense got stagnant, Vassell was the guy they could turn to when they needed a bucket to keep things going. Defensively, Vassell made big strides. His wingspan is ridiculous at 6'10", and he's learning to really use that to his advantage. He became a better defender as the season progressed, taking on tougher assignments and using his length to disrupt opponents. It's not just about the steals and blocks, it's the way he impacts shots and makes offensive players think twice when they're up against him. Now, Vassell wasn't perfect, and that's what makes this so exciting. He had a few rough patches, especially in January, where he struggled to score in back-to-back -back games and even finished in single digits six times. It's clear that consistency is something he'll need to work on. Still, that's part of the process for any young player, and it shows there's room for growth. Imagine what he could do if he cleans that up. Looking forward, I'm excited about what Vassell can do next season. He's proven that he can lead the offense, even being one of the go-to guys when the team needs a boost. If he can keep improving on both ends of the floor, there's no doubt in my mind that he and Wemby could become one of the best duos in the league. The Spurs need to surround them with a bit more help, but once that happens, they'll be an even bigger problem for opposing defenses. Vassell's durability will be key as well. He held up much better this season, but the stress reaction in his foot that caused him to miss the last few games is something to keep an eye on. If he can make it through a full season without any major injuries, it'll help silence any concerns about his long-term availability. And trust me, the Spurs are going to need him if they're serious about making a postseason run in the near future. Overall, Vassell's future looks extremely bright. He's established himself as one of the cornerstones of this franchise, and I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon. His contract extension kicks in next season, and I'd bet he's only going to get better. Vassell and Wemby together could be the start of something special in San Antonio. If the Spurs front office can keep building the right pieces around them, they're going to be a force for years to come. But after him, one guy I feel like we always forget about, Johnson. Johnson had a decent showing in the 2024 season, and I think there's even more to be excited about for next season. He played in 69 games, averaging 15.7 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 2.8 assists per game while shooting an impressive 45.4% from the field. Johnson's versatility really shined through, especially as he adjusted to a new role as a sixth man. This change came after the arrival of Wemby, and it turned out to be a great move for both him and the team. The transition to the bench wasn't easy, but Johnson embraced it like a champ. He brought a spark off the bench that the Spurs desperately needed. With his unselfishness and ability to create his own shots, he was crucial for the second unit, helping to boost an offense that struggled at times. His scoring did dip from his 22 points per game the previous season, but that's not surprising when he wasn't the main focus anymore. Remember, last season, Johnson had to carry a lot more of the offensive load. Despite the dip in scoring, Johnson's efficiency improved, which is so important. He shot 35% from three-point range, bouncing back from a career low 32% the year before. His shooting form looked a lot better too. No more of those awkward moon balls. His ability to adapt while maintaining that edge is a testament to his growth as a player, and it's just what the Spurs needed. Looking ahead, 
there's even more potential for Johnson. He's shown he can shoot efficiently before, nearly 40% from three on over five attempts per game just two seasons ago. Getting back to that form could elevate his game even further. He's still got some room for improvement defensively. Sometimes he can lose track of his man or overhelp, but he's also the emotional leader on the team, the energizer bunny that keeps everyone motivated. That's something every team needs. Another exciting aspect of Johnson's situation is his contract. He's got three years left on a very team-friendly deal worth $54 million, which makes him a prime candidate for sixth man of the year next season. If he can continue to uplift a potentially deeper second unit, he'll be in the conversation for that award. However, let's not forget the trade rumors. Johnson's value on a team-friendly contract makes him a target for other teams looking to upgrade their roster. While it's tempting to consider trade offers, I truly hope Keldon stays in San Antonio. He's a valuable piece of their core, and the Spurs should only consider trades if the return is something incredible. Ultimately, I see Johnson as a key part of the Spurs' future. He's more valuable than many realize, and with continued growth, he can really make a significant impact. The energy he brings, combined with the potential to boost his shooting and defense, means Keldon Johnson could be even better next season. And besides him, even though he may not be the biggest name, we can't forget about Trey Jones. Jones had a solid season, and I'm excited about what he can bring to the table this upcoming season. Playing in 77 games, he averaged 10 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 6.2 assists while shooting an impressive 50.5% from the field. That's not just good. It shows how effective he can be as a starting point guard. Jones stepped into a challenging role on a team that was still finding its way. He was a steady presence, earning himself a new contract to stay in San Antonio. When Jeremy Sohan took the starting point guard spot, the focus shifted to how Sohan would adjust, not on how Jones would handle a bench role. That just goes to show how valuable he is. He's the kind of player who contributes no matter where he's placed. Once he got back into the starting lineup, he didn't look back. He developed a great chemistry with Wemby, assisting him on 105 baskets. Talk about being a playmaker. Jones pushed the pace, kept the ball moving, and helped the Spurs score 110.9 points per 100 possessions while he was on the court. That's the highest among all rotation players. It's clear he knows how to run an offense. What really caught my attention was Jones's improvement in shooting. After becoming a starter, he shot 38.8% from beyond the arc. That's a massive leap from his career average of 27%. Sure, a lot of those shots were wide open looks from the corner, but if he can maintain this level of shooting, it opens up a whole new world for him and the team. As he heads into the final year of his contract, Jones is in a great position. Even if they draft or sign another point guard, he's proven he can handle whatever role they throw at him. He's got that steadiness that this young team needs, especially during those emotional stretches when they might get a little careless with the ball. Now, whether he's part of their long-term plans is a different story. If his shooting keeps improving and he can stay consistent with that floater of his, he could become a really well-rounded offensive player. He's got the skills to orchestrate the offense without needing to dominate the ball, making him a perfect fit alongside Wemby and any exciting prospects the Spurs grab in the draft. Of course, his height can be an issue on defense against certain matchups, but you can't fault his effort or physicality. Even if the front office doesn't see him as the future point guard, and that's totally understandable, he's still a valuable rotation piece. He could mentor a younger guard or serve as a stopgap until the right lead guard comes along. But here's the big question. Would Jones be happy staying in San Antonio? If someone comes in with a starting spot and an eight-figure deal, It'll be hard for him to turn that down. I really hope the Spurs have a plan for him because losing could leave a significant gap in their lineup. But besides the actual point guard, what about the fake point guard? Jeremy Sohan? Jeremy Sohan had a season full of ups and downs last year. Let's break it down. In 74 games, he averaged 11.6 points, 6.4 rebounds, and 3.4 assists, all while shooting 43.8% from the field. Pretty solid, right? The first part of the season was like a roller coaster. So Han started as the Spurs point guard, and honestly, it was a tough gig. He struggled with his playmaking and faced intense pressure from defenses. There were high turnover nights that made everyone hold their breath. So Han himself admitted, there have been moments where it's like, yo, I don't want to. You could feel the frustration, but hey, he never gave up, showing grit and determination. Once the Spurs moved Trey Jones into the starting lineup, things changed dramatically. That's when So Han found his groove as an off-ball cutter. He started using Wemby's gravity to create space. 
leading to easier scoring opportunities. I loved watching him adapt and flourish in this new role. It's like flipping a switch. Let's talk shooting. So Han improved as a three-point shooter, hitting 30.8% from beyond the arc. It's not elite, but it's a huge step up from his rookie season. His willingness to take those shots kept defenses honest. Plus, he averaged nearly two offensive rebounds per game, so he's always hustling. His athleticism allows him to create shots around the rim, but he's got some work to do, finishing 65.9% of those attempts. Now defensively, that's where Sohan really shined. He stepped up as a stopper, guarding the opposing team's best perimeter player. His defensive win share of 1.9 shows how effective he was. With Wemby patrolling the paint, so Han made life tough for opposing scorers. It's like he took pride in his defensive duties, and that's exactly what the Spurs need. Looking ahead, the Spurs need So Han to find consistency on offense. For every 20-point explosion, there was a game where he struggled to reach double digits. If he can become a reliable shooter or a crafty cutter, he'll be an integral part of this team's future. I'm excited to see how he develops his offensive game this summer. He's been putting in the work with shooting coach Jimmy Barron, which is great news. Seems like that no drama type of player, always willing to learn and adapt. Last season, defenses collapsed on Wemby, leaving So Han with limited options. If they stretch the floor, So Han and Wemby will be able to dominate inside. So Han will be eligible for an extension in two seasons. It's hard to see the Spurs offering him the same max rookie scale extension they gave Devin Vassell, but if he keeps improving, who knows? These next two years are vital for his future with the team. If he can elevate his game, not only will he secure that second contract, but he'll also help the Spurs climb the ranks. But what about the backup big man from last year, Zach Collins? Zach Collins had a season filled with ups and downs last year. He played 69 games, averaging 11.2 points, 5.4 rebounds, and 2.8 assists. That sounds decent, right? But for a guy who was supposed to shine alongside rookie sensation Wemby, it just didn't quite hit the mark. Collins came into the season full of promise after showing flashes of brilliance in the previous season. The Spurs believed in him so much that they extended his contract for two years at an average of $17.4 million a year. He was pegged as the starting center, a perfect fit to complement Wemby, who felt more comfortable at power forward. In theory, Collins could take on the heavy lifting defensively, letting Wemby roam freely on the court. But things didn't go as smoothly as everyone hoped. The Spurs leaned heavily on Collins for offense. He did what he could, showcasing his skills in the post. But his outside shot? It was a ghost. The Spurs offense struggled when he was at the center of it. Defensively, Collins faced his share of challenges, especially against the league's top centers. His rim protection was lacking, and the Spurs' perimeter defense? Well, it was just as shaky. The turning point came when the team adjusted and moved Wemby to center. Suddenly, Collins looked more comfortable. He didn't have to be the primary focus, which allowed him to play more freely. He still had trouble finding his shot, but his post-game and passing improved. Sure, he wasn't the superstar fans wanted him to be, but he held his ground and didn't become a liability. Now looking ahead, the big question is, what's Collins' identity? Is he a stretch five with a wayward shot or a traditional center who should play closer to the basket? Either way, he's got to find his rhythm. There's nothing wrong with being a big man who mixes it up inside while having some range. That's still a valuable player, especially off the bench. If Collins can get that shot back, he'll be a game changer. Spacing has been a significant issue for the Spurs, and having a center who can shoot would open things up big time. Imagine what a reliable three-pointer could do for his game and the team's offense. It would make Collins a versatile player and create exciting lineup possibilities with Wemby. The pressure's on. He's got to perform especially with that mid-sized deal making him a potential trade candidate. But let's keep our fingers crossed. If he can rehab well and come back strong, he'll be a crucial part of the Spurs' future. Let's hope Zach Collins can find that spark and help elevate the team this season. But one guy I think was completely underrated last year. Branham had a roller coaster of a season last year. He played 75 games, averaging 9.2 points, 2 rebounds, and 2.1 assists. When I think about his potential, it's exciting. He finished his rookie season strong, averaging 12.6 points after the All-Star break. That performance gave fans, including me, plenty of hope for his sophomore campaign. The summer and preseason looked promising too. He made eight of his 17 three-point attempts, which hinted that maybe his unusual shooting release wouldn't be a big problem. 
However, the reality was a bit different. Once the regular season hit, his shooting struggles were evident. Sure, there were nights when he'd sink mid-range jumpers and facilitate plays, but those moments were inconsistent. It felt like he couldn't quite fill the role of reliable bench score the Spurs needed. The team was also in chaos with the point so hand experiment, which didn't help anyone, especially Branham. With the added pressure of taking over point guard duties, he wasn't able to shine. But here's where it gets interesting. Branham faced a demotion, but instead of sulking, he bounced back. When he got another shot to earn minutes, he upped his game. After the All-Star break, he shot nearly 40% from beyond the arc. That was impressive. Even with the ups and downs, his late season performance left a much better impression than earlier in the year. Now looking ahead, the Spurs are at a crossroads with Branham. He's not really a point guard, nor is he a consistent outside shooter. It seems they might add a veteran guard this offseason, which could impact his minutes. He's not built to play small forward either, so it's tricky. However, he's only 21 and still has plenty of room to grow. I believe there's a place for him in San Antonio. He's cheap, talented, and durable. And playing alongside guards who can create plays could unlock his potential as a secondary playmaker. His off-ball movement needs some work, but his cutting skills aren't bad. Even though his defense had issues, he played hard, especially after being benched. With that 6'10 wingspan, he can still be a disruptive force on the perimeter. Let's not be too quick to write him off. Every player needs a chance to find their role. Look at guys like Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Kobe White. They took time to develop. However, there's a balance. If the Spurs bring in too many new projects, Branham could get lost in the shuffle. He's got to show improvement on key skills, or he might risk falling by the wayside. I'm excited to see what Branham can do this season. He's got the talent. He just needs the right situation to flourish. The potential is there, and I hope the Spurs give him that chance to shine. Overall, though, for the Spurs, the potential of Wemby and Chris Paul teaming up is absolutely electrifying. Imagine Wemby with his unique blend of size and skill paired with a veteran like Chris Paul who has the basketball IQ and playmaking ability to elevate everyone around him. This duo could truly transform the Spurs into a competitive force. Wemby's shot blocking and versatility on defense combined with Chris's leadership and precision passing create an exciting synergy. The energy in the arena would be off the charts. They could develop a lethal pick and roll that keeps defenders guessing and opens up space for shooters. With Wemby rolling to the basket and Chris orchestrating the offense, scoring opportunities would be abundant. Plus, having a seasoned player like Chris to mentor Wemby will help him adjust to the NBA's intensity and speed. It's a recipe for success. If they can gel on the court, they could lead the Spurs back to prominence and make a serious playoff push. The future is bright in San Antonio, and I can't wait to see what they can accomplish together.